Do flowers really grow on the moon? Stay with me, I'll prove they do. Simply Painting is underwritten by Windsor & Newton, makers of Galleria Flow Formula acrylic colors and paintbrushes, manufacturers of fine art materials since 1832. Welcome to City Painting. I'm Frank Clark and we're in the Borough in County Clare, which is in the west of Ireland. And for this lesson we're going to paint some rocks and some wildflowers. So let me tell you something about the burn. First of all, it contains lots of rocks. And in fact, if you look behind me, you will see a dolmen. Now let me tell you what a dolmen is. A dolmen is an ancient burial site. And there are many of these in the burn. In fact, this one behind me dates back about 5,000 years. Interesting? Yeah. Also, let's talk about the flowers. Well, they say that the burn contains more wildflowers than any other part of Western Europe. So we've got the ideal opportunity to paint rocks and wildflowers. So why don't we take some photographs, make some sketches and go back and do it. Well, did you enjoy the burn? It was lovely, wasn't it? Very rocky place. I was going to paint the dolmen and I thought, no, no, let's do some flowers. So that's what we're going to do. You have the little buttercups. Well, that's what we did. But before we talk about the painting, let's talk about the materials. And once more, very quickly, starting with the paints. We have eight tubes. Permanent rose, ultramarine, raw sienna, thello green, cadmium yellow, burnt umber, white, and vermilion hue and the vermilion hue comes out because we're not going to need it. We have the three brushes, the big one into the water, the medium one into the water and the third one we're going to keep to one side which is the small brush. Now just let me dwell for a moment on the brushes. You keep the brushes in the water when you're painting. When you're finished painting I would strongly advise wash them out with soap and water and put them to one side like I had them there and they'll be fine the next time then that you want to use them. You can leave them in the water, but it's a good thing to wash them now and again. Just a point. We have the plastic palette for putting the paint out on. We have the water and we have our pad for drying the brush. And last we have, once again, our canvas panel. Now this time the canvas panel is 14 by 10 that way. It's upright. So that means it's portrait. And portrait does not necessarily mean your face. It means upright. Have some more fun still applies, which is horizon, sky, middle and foreground. It doesn't matter whether it's flowers or whatever it is, we always paint the same way. Having said that to you now, let's now look at the picture we painted in the barn. Now, what we've got is we've got some buttercups and they're down in a little crag between the rocks. The rocks are left and right of it. And you'll notice something else rather peculiar. The colouring, what we did was we made a purpley, ready colour for the crevice between the rocks. You didn't want an old browny colour and it works very well. So why don't we try that? But before we do, let's put out some paint. We're going to draw it, haven't we? All right, let's do that. Let's put them all to one side, the, the paints, and just keep the blue. Now put some blue out. Don't be afraid to put a decent bit out because we'll be using it in a minute anyway. Take our small brush and let's look back quickly once more to our painting and we see that what we need to map in first is just the rocks, that's all really. So let's do that. Make some inky paint up. Now, ah, good bit. Now, let's see. Now, the top of the rocks went somewhere like that, didn't they? Now, they don't have to be dead on. Don't be. We're not, uh, we're not slaves to copying at all. That's a, about where one of them is. Now, the other one. Let's see. Now, it sort of comes here some way like that. And it goes down like that and down. And then it comes out there. And then it goes off down to the end. So that leaves us a nice space in the middle then to put our, our flowers in. That's all we're going to do. Let's put the brush, give it a swish around in the water now. And put it down there beside us. The other two we leave in the water. The reason I take that one out now and again, just to mention to you also, is that the, the 
bristle on it is, or the nylon is fairly fragile and if you leave it in the water it'll bend like that and it's not a good thing to do to have that bent all the time. So leave it like that. Right, next, let's put out some more paint. Now the three colours that we're going to paint the background with. We got permanent rose, we've got the blue which handily we've used some of and the third colour is raw sienna. They're the three colours we're going to use to paint this this background and then something else percentage wise I would say a third of each doesn't that make it easy for you okay big brush out of the water and let's mix some of that now one two three now you can adjust it if you're not happy if you feel it's too dark or it's too I think that's about a third of each let's go at it starting from the top and working down now you can give this one or two coats it's up to yourself I, we, we might have to give it a second go. We might not. Let's see how we get on anyway. Now we're, we're kind of lining it down now, but don't make it too matte. Make it kind of mottledy looking. You see the way? I, so now what I'm doing is I put a bit of red in and then I put in some blue beside it. And then I put a bit of raw sienna. I'm still putting the thirds and I'm mixing the whole lot together on the, on the canvas panel. See that? Now, heading down, this is always, I find always there's a boring part, isn't it? The background, you're, kind of get, you're dying to get at the flowers, you're saying, where are we at these flowers? But you just have to wait now, be patient. You know, after all, I mean, you're painting a masterpiece every 25 minutes, so what more do you want? It's a good idea, though. The faster you paint off, the better the picture. The more you labour over it, the worse it gets. I've often found that, that I... You know, I'd be get a commission and I'd want to be a little bit worried about it. It'd be from, from my Auntie Joe or somebody like that and I'd be very careful with it. And it doesn't turn out as well as the one that was painted flat out. No, I think we're going pretty good. Now we give this a dry when we get it all on the first layer, first coat, the undercoat on. Because it's fairly, you see, it's fairly streaky looking, isn't it? Yeah. I just line it in there a little bit like that. Now what I'm doing is I'm just running the brush on the look. It's exactly the same as this famous garage door that I keep talking about. If you were doing that, you would do it no different. Now we're nearly down to the bottom. The background can take more time, honestly. Yeah, so that's why you need the big brush. And we kind of wobble it. You see, it's, it's a kind of a back and forward movement until we get to now I think we're grand there now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give that just a tiny go with the hairdryer because all I'm doing now is I'm just piling on more paint and more paint on top of wet paint and I'm getting nowhere so let's give it a quick dry you see the advantage of painting in acrylic now or watercolour for that matter because you can dry as you go some of the mediums, like you couldn't do this with oils, so you'd have to wait for days before it's dry. I keep saying that. Now, as it turns dry, or becomes dry, it will start to go matte. Now, I think we've done that pretty well. We've given it a good dry, and. I think we nearly have it dry enough. Yeah, that should be all right now. The first drying is the worst one. But if you didn't have the dryer, you'd have to wait about 20 minutes before it would be dry. Now, the second coat, coat two. But you can be a little bit easier now as well. Get that first coat on, it's not so bad at all. I keep mixing it there in the centre and then just scrumbling it on. Scrumbling, that's a very nice word, isn't it? We use it a lot, don't we? It's, it's the rapid movement back and forward of the brush. That's all it is. And once we get this in, we'll be, we'll be at the picture there, don't worry. Uh -huh. You can actually see it. Can you see it getting darker and filling in? Yeah, of course you can. Yes. We'll have another quick look at the picture now. Let's see. Well, how are we getting on? Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Could maybe make it a little redder there in places. 
It doesn't have to be exactly the same colour. But it's good exercise to try and get it the same colour. Good practice for you. Or you might like it different. You might decide, no, I don't like that background. I want something different. Well, I'm not stopping you. Now, back in with the brush for a moment. Now, I'm going to look at up here, the two rocks. Now, what colour would we need there? Well, we'll obviously need white, won't we? So let's put some of that out. A good dollop of it. Don't be afraid of the white. Now, the medium size or the middle size brush, and let's uh, let's see if we can create some rock colour. I think we need some of the raw sienna, and let's see what that colour in the centre is there. Look at that. That's not bad, is it? Oh, look at that. That's pretty nice, isn't it? Ah, yes. Feed it in there. So what I've done is I've taken the three colours and added white to them. That's all it is. We just get the background in first. I always find this is, as I say, it's tedious putting in these backgrounds, but has to be done. Nah, that's not bad. And now let's do the same on the other side. <laughs> Once we get this, we're away. We're away in a hack, as they say. Did you ever hear that saying? That's, a, that's an Irishism for you. We're flying. Now, one more. I think one more go, and then we start looking at the flowers. And as I'm doing this, this is drying again, isn't it? There's method in me madness. Now, I think, let's just, uh, let's outline this a wee bit here. And to do that, we, I've got to put out another colour. Brown. Or burnt umber. Put them out there. Keep the colours round the edge. Remember I said that to you? And only put them out when you want them. And then you won't be cluttering the palette. So now I'm going to take some blue and some brown. That gives me a good dark shade because I want to put in some... See, it's, it's dark down this. This is the rock going down the side. You see it there? And then there's... Oh, there's a lot of rock down here, so... Blue and brown again. And let's... Uh, let's, let's and there's a bit there, isn't there? Yes, there is. Now we'll start... Uh, Making some inroads into the the middle of the rock in a second. We're just getting the main features. Now, obviously, it looks a bit flat looking. So, what did we do to make it unflat? And have a look. There's kind of little stripes on the on the, the rocks. Now, how do you do them? Well, very simple. Not some more of this. Making an inky an inky mess up. Now, there's a little, there's a little crack in the rock there. Yeah, no. Does this is what the rock cracked? Where well, I don't know what it, I'd hardly say a joint stepped on it, but over the years it probably subsided on one thing. The rocks, they look. Uh, see that now? Now we might have to colour it in a bit. There you, you fiddle around with this yourself. Make your own kind of cracks in the rocks, and let's have a look at the other one here. Now you can have a look back at it and say, "Oh yes, well maybe." Uh, oh, there's another one there. There's a big crack in the rock there, indeed, and that crack gets deeper there. So. How are we getting on? Now, back to the middle brush again. We're just shading the rocks now to give them a bit of life. Now, a little bit, a little bit darker on just one, one little place there. You know, just look at that there. And the same thing will probably apply there. You want to keep it a little, there's a little bit of a dip in the rock. Now, pure white. Because the light's probably coming this way a bit, so I want a bit of nice light colour. And we'll come back at that and again, get at it again in a minute if we're not happy with it, but I think we're all right. Let me put a little bit of Now, back to the picture now, because now we're ready to get at the flowers in the centre. Let's do that. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, how do we do that? Well, the first thing we need is yellow, isn't it? Yellow paint. And we're hoping this is dry, but it is pretty good. Yes, we're going fine. Let's get out some nice yellow paint. Now, we're going through the paints this time, aren't we, now? Yes. Now, the leaves are the petals of the flowers, not leaves, the petals, isn't it? Yellow and white. Because the, that's all they are, the buttercups. Now, let's look and see where they are. There's one there. Two. Look, I used a... This is where the filbert brush comes in. Remember the name filbert? Round end. Well, you see, all I've got to do then is just press the round end on like that and let it pull it in like that. If it doesn't work the first time, you've got plenty of it. Now we fill all that in. There's the buttercup now. Look at the field. One. And there's another one here somewhere, isn't there? 
Well, use plenty of paint for this. Don't be miserable because it, you start dragging the paint. You see, it, it's the it's the one swipe that does it really, and it's a 50-50 mixture, white and yellow, for this bit. See that? Ah, there's a good petal. Now, see that one? Isn't that nice? Another one down there, and another one there. Now, you could, if you wanted, you could actually turn the board around so that it's on top all the time, but uh, I couldn't do that unless it gets down to my head, so. Try it this way, though, it's easy. Now, that's two. We got one over here, haven't we? One, two, three, four, five. Let's fill the whole lot in. We can, we can, we can, as we say, we can smarten them up later on. Now that's three. We've got one down here. Now you can change the colouring. Sometimes you've got to go over these twice. Because, well, let's go down a bit here. There's one down there. And there. And there. It's easy, isn't it? All I'm doing is just resting the brush, look, and then pulling it in, and it, it, the brush does it for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's too easy, this, with flowers. There's the other one there. Now we've got one over here somewhere, haven't we? Where's that fella? It's about here, okay. Now, do you know what? When you're painting flowers, always make a definite stroke. Don't be afraid to do it. Don't say to yourself, oh, I've gone wrong. You haven't gone wrong. You can Remember, you can go over this. Now we have one about there. And that's another one there. That might be a bit, let's round them off a bit more, that's better. And this is just, it, they may look a bit flat at the moment. We've got to put some centres in them, don't forget that. I love painting flowers. You can do these on a black board too, they're lovely. Just get a plain black board. It saves you the trouble of having to paint in the background. <laughs> Because that's the lazy bit. I hate the backgrounds. They take so long, they're slow, compared to painting the pictures themselves. Now, I got it. there's a wee one down the end there. Do you see that little fella down there? Why don't we put him in? It's a little, he only just barely arrived. Now, we want to be careful, don't make him too big. And he goes, right there somewhere. Only a little buttercup. Now, there he is. Now there are my little buttercups. The top here looks a bit messy, so I'll give it another. You see, you can you can you can go over them the second time. And that, see, don't be afraid of them. Now, I think we start in the centres now, shall we? All right, let's look at the centre. Now the centre of these fellas, if you look back to the picture again, is a little, is a little readier. So what would we do there now? Well, I'll tell you now. We'll mix. The vermilion and the yellow together. That's all it is, look. See what we get? And we've got a little brush, so I'll just dab it in there. Now probably this, these might need a bit of a dry, because yeah, it's not a bit, ah, they're all right. You see them now? Look, do you know, this is only a dab of paint in here. Don't be too particular. Painting, don't let anybody come any nearer than 14 feet from your picture. Did you ever know that? That's the distance you should be. So we keep going down here. One, two. Adding some of the red, which is the permanent rose, and the yellow all the time. Ah, there we are. Look at that. The other way, the centre. Have you seen the centre of buttercups? That's what they look like, isn't it? I mean, you could decide you might like bluebells. or That's one thing about the burren. There are hundreds of different flowers, all the wildflowers you could ever imagine. It's just incredible. The whole place, I don't know how it arrived. They said it was the Ice Age or something like that, but just a solid piece of rock. And in between those rocks, that's where and why all those little flowers grow, because it's the shading between the rocks. Incredible place. Now, now I think I've done enough dabbing around with that now. I'm going to, and now I'm going to get stuck into the, the leaves around it. But I'll come back at them in a minute. Now, I've got to put in some leaves and things. Green leaves. Now, how would you do that? Well, the next thing is put out this next colour of hers. This is the Thello Green. Now, this gives us a very strong green. But we have some of the other colours we're going to need as well. And let's swish my little brush around. Remember I said we want to leave him out of the water. We'll always clean him. And we take out the middle size fella. It can be great fun, this. You can make up your own background. You don't have to do exactly as I'm doing. You might like rocks. So, OK, well, don't put in any. You don't have to do exactly as I do. What is it they say? Don't do as I do, do as I say. Now, 
We're going to put in some, oh, look at that. Look, these are little wiggles, see them? Little, little wiggle, wiggle. Now, what I've done as well is I'm putting, if you look at the paintbrush, it's covered in all three different colours. I've got thello green, lemon yellow, and raw sienna, and it's on that brush, and it's not mixed. I don't want to mix it on the palette. I want to mix it on the, actually on the canvas, because I'll get all that lovely colouring if I do it. Do you see that? I'm just working my way around these things. Now there's, oh, there's an ideal opportunity for one there. Look at that now. So, these, you're looking down at this now. So it could be. Now now I might decide I want to darken that a bit, maybe too bright. So let's go slightly. See that? I add a bit of blue to it. And I get a darker colour, don't I? See? I'll put a bit of that in there. No, don't worry, I'll come back at it again with, with some nice bright colour. Here we go, back into the bright colour again. The three colours again. Say, give me three minutes more. No, I'm just saying. Now, now you can go on at this for ever. <laughs> but mind you, try and keep your flowers in some sort of a formation like that. Don't uh, don't put in dozens and dozens of them. Now I think we will need a bit there. Is it good? It's, it's I also think we need. We need a, I think we, yes, I think we're going some darker colour there. So, look, I'm putting in the blue once more into that same mixture, and that gives me, and I'm going to add a bit of the burnt umber, just to, just to give it a, the flowers are kind of resting on a little nest of leaves and foliage and all kinds of little things like that. Now, I don't want to kill the nice bright bits there because they're, they're quite pleasant. So now I'm going to add in some yellow, some of the thello green and get a really bright yellow colour. Look at a bright green colour. What am I talking about? Yellow. Ah, there we are. Look at that. Ah, something, something down there because there could be other little plants, li little things down in the in the bottom of the. How are we coming on? Ah, I'm looking fine here now. Now, I'd like to just get at the centre of them again. Let them dry a bit because if you don't, uh, the paint will sink into them. Now, in the very centre of those flowers, you have kind of little eyelet-y things, see that? Don't need little, just, it's just a dab of the brush. Look, can you understand, see that? Look, dab, dab, dab. That's, it's, it's, it's where the seeds or the, like the pollen or whatever you get in the centre of buttercups are, but you see the way it just creates a bit of, bit of life in it. Look, it's just that, that, but you have to be, you have to wait till it's dry a bit, because if you don't, you won't see it. It'll just sink into the other paint and it'll disappear. I love doing these, fellas. It takes, you can take your time with them. There's no mad rush. Now, I'm going to just try something else now. I've always swished my little brush around in the water well and dry them off and put them there. Now, let's go back to the middle-sized brush again, just for a minute. Give it a good clean. Dee, 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 dee. Now, I'm going to get just white. I just want to tip the edge of them. I'm just tipping the edge of the flower with white. Now, why am I doing that? Because if you look at buttercups, that's the way they are. Just around the very edge of them, you get white. But you have to wait until they're dry, otherwise the white won't take, see? Now, that's why the filbert, the round brush, is quite easy. Now you can uh, you could you could take a time or you can use the dryer on it. You don't have to. I was constrained slightly because, uh, as I say, I've only got so much time to be with you. But I can certainly now. Oh, what have I got there? A, 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 I've got a new petal. I mean, that's all right. I'm just I'm just putting little finishing touches to it. You see that? They look begin to come to life a bit, don't they? Yeah, you'll have no trouble doing these. Flowers are very easy, particularly with acrylics, because you can just dry it as you go along. It's almost like a... So I guess all the friends, the first the first Prezi could be the flowers, could it? Now, let me just have a quick shifty here. I've got to put in something in case I forget them, because uh, this would be very serious if I didn't. Do you like the shirt, by the way? 
Well, this is a compilation of all the other shirts. When we, when we cut them up, we put them all together. Now, it's a great idea to wear a bright colored shirt like this because you can't see the paint on it. Now, I'm going to hide them. In here, I'm going to put a wee bird. I always do, so just to bear with me, as they say. Now, one more little go here with the, with the green paint, and I think we're nearly finished this fella here. I hope you enjoy painting flowers because they're very easy and very enjoyable. I'm just going to give a couple, a couple of little dibs down there. That's all. Don't overdo it. And put my brush back in the water and say to you that I'm, that's the end of this lesson. So until we meet again, you try this out and have some more fun.